Hello, and today we're going to create a battle game in Scratch. So to start off, create a kind of round sprite. Uh, this will be the player sprite. Now create another costume for the bullet. Just make this a bit smaller. Now duplicate uh, the sprite and create a new, and recolor it to create the enemy sprite. Now we're just going to add some controls for the player. So when uh, right is pressed, it's going to change uh, the direction by 15. And when left is pressed, it's going to change it by minus 15. When up is pressed, we're going to want to move by 10 steps. Now we're just going to add bullets. Do this by uh, checking whether if the mouse is pressed uh, and then creating a clone. Make sure you separate this into a new script and then we're going to wait a few seconds before we can uh, fire again. Not that long, that might be a bit ridiculous, like 0.1 seconds let's say. Now we're going to make it so the bullet will react to our commands. So it's uh, going to, well, fire when you press uh, the mouse, of course. We're going to make sure it, if it's touching uh, sprite 2 or the edge, it's going to delete the clone. Uh, we're going to make sure it points towards mouse pointer. It will already be at the X position of sprite 1. We'll make sure we move uh, 10 steps. Uh, until it hits the edge and then it will delete the clone. Also remember to make sure you switch to the bullet costume. Now, uh, drag over the when I start this clone sprite and also the control sprite but we're going to want to get rid of everything in that and just move it by the uh, five steps that we put in and uh, after that we're just going to make sure it's going to point towards sprite one now just drag over the, the creators clone block and uh, just separate it from when this mouse is clicked block and make sure it's going towards sprite 1 and going to detect sprite 1. Now we're just going to uh, have a repeat block in there to create a clone and uh, after that wait one second to prevent any kind of uh, ridiculously fast firing. Now we're going to make sure that we sense how far we are away from sprite 1 and then we're going to uh, make sure we're just at just about uh, 50 uh, away from uh, Sprite 1. As you can see now it's kind of following us but not going to glitch. Now we're just going to repeat 10 times uh, move 5 steps without pointing in this direction in order to add a bit more of an interesting pattern to its movement. We're now going to detect if we're touching sprite 1 in the bullet sprite and then we're going to create a new variable called health. We're then going to set it to the actually create a new variable called enemy health as well. Uh, we're going to uh, change that health by minus 1 at, a, if it, at the end of that. If it's touching sprite 1, as we don't want to just remove it if it's touching the edge. We're going to do a similar thing in sprite 1, detecting if it's touching sprite 2 and changing enemy health by minus 1. Now we're just going to set enemy health to 30 at the start of the game and also set health to 30. Now we're going to make it so the player can win or lose. To do this we're just going to check whether the enemy health is less than 0 or the health is less than 0. Uh, when we do this, we'll just say you win or you lose, depending on whether enemy health or health are less than zero. So if enemy health is less than zero, you lose. No, win, sorry. If uh, 
if it, well, health is less than zero, you will lose. So just change that, and uh, then uh, you'll stop all in both. That will conclude today's tutorial. So if you want, if you enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you want to receive notifications of future videos, press the bell. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and bye. Thank you.